joining us now for more is former federal prosecutor Doug Burns. For more than 20 years, Doug has prosecuted and defended white collar crimes and fraud in business and regulatory cases. Good to have you here on Street Smart, Doug. Thank you. I'm just shaking my head at this because the timing couldn't be worse, I'm sure, from the president's perspective. But uh, give me the best and the worst case here. I mean, it seems like in the best case is just a little egg on sort of the administration's right. face, if you will. But what happens in the worst case? No, I think you frame it out well because that's what everybody wants to know. Is this thing going to be a story that basically goes away or is it going to continue on? First, I would separate it out political lens and legal lens. I mean, politically, the rhetoric is flying on both sides. You know, it's very important to support clean energy and alternatives to regular, you know, fuels. And of course, we all agree with that. But the converse is, there's lots of questions here, you know, fundraisers associated with the White House, emails suggesting that it was rushed through. That's the political part of it. Legally, I mean, the FBI went in there on Friday. Um, they raided the corporate headquarters and took out banker box after banker box of documents. Um, causing somebody like me to say, why didn't they just issue a subpoena? In other words, usually you would subpoena records unless you specifically think that there's some risk that they're going to be destroyed or unavailable. So that's kind of, uh, kind of a harsh move. The FBI went to the CEO's home and uh, tried to interview him. Apparently he's going to voluntarily be interviewed uh, next Friday, which suggests, you know, less that there's, you know, it's not a situation, for example, Lisa, where it's like, you know, I'm asserting my Fifth Amendment privilege, I'm getting counsel. So to, it's hard to answer your question. It's a very good one. Where's this going? I mean, uh, if I had to predict, I don't think it's necessarily um, going to be a criminal case, but I think there's going to be a big political I dust up. I have to jump in here, Doug, and say sure, that man. not everybody would agree uh, government intervention with taxpayer money is necessary to support any fledgling industry. Uh, some people would say, you know, the market will do that. If there's a profit, you know, they can uh, go ahead and use those technologies, create them, develop them, and make money. Uh, however, I want to ask a sort of on, on, a, on a different point, because you were a federal prosecutor. How do, how do you avoid a conflict of interest when the Obama Department of Justice uh, has to check out what's going on in the Obama, Obama Department of Energy? Do you see what I mean? It seems it, it seems like it would be difficult. That's a great question because I was reading today a bunch of material and they were talking about the independent counsel statute, um, you know, which you may remember, which has now technically lapsed. And many commentators were saying, you know, there really should be an independent person uh, looking at this as opposed to Eric Holder's Justice Department. That's a good point. And I, along those lines. As we're looking at the DOJ or the process by right. which the administration actually does decide to go ahead with a loan of this sort, right. it was nine days instead of the typical 28 days. Yep. We mentioned that there was a rush. You know, is that a criminal violation potentially or is that a regulatory issue? How will the sort of the DOJ turn the yeah. lens or the focus back I, on itself? I think the question of <clears throat> the fact that, you know, they may have, you know, expedited this or rushed this is probably more under the political umbrella. I think where they may get in trouble, honestly, are over these representations, not to be a broken record, of the companies fine, we're doing well. If they could establish that they specifically knew that wasn't the case and that bankruptcy and the firing and laying off of 1,100 people uh, was essentially imminent, uh, that would be different on the criminal landscape. But I'm not really so sure it's going to end up that way, but it's hard to say. All right, Doug Burns, it'll be interesting to see what we hear from the CEO. Obviously, ongoing situation. Thanks so much for joining us. Always appreciate your insight. Doug Burns, former federal prosecutor.